Hi, welcome to my kitchen. I'm Kathy Neptune, and I'm going to share with you tips, tools, and recipes to make your time in the kitchen fun, fast, and fabulous. Now we have the spring and Easter and holiday season coming up, so we're going to highlight some of our uh, fresh produce and leftover ham. Uh, ham's so versatile, but there's only so many different soups and salads that you can make. So I'm going to show you how to do a broccoli ham ring. And you, some of you will remember the technique that we used, uh, such as the taco ring and the Reuben ring. And this is just another variation, so versatile, beautiful presentation, and very simple to make. And then we're going to also do a carrot salad for the season, refreshing that you could do any time of year. And I thought to bring up to date a deconstructed upside down pineapple cake. It's fun, it's easy, and a few different variations as well. So let's get started on a broccoli ham ring. <coughs> I'm preheating the oven at 350 degrees. And if you remember, if you want any of these recipes or ideas of resources for these tools, you can email me and I'm happy to send you a reply. And thank you to everybody who sends in your, your questions and suggestions. So um, we're using a crescent roll in a can. You know, you bang them and you open them. And if you forget how to do this recipe, basically everything we have here is cooked except the crescent rolls. So you just follow the instructions on the crescent rolls to preheat your oven at 350, which we've done. And the bake time is approximately the same, maybe five or 10 minutes more. So it's an easy thing to do. And I'm unrolling the crescents. I have one in the pan already. So you need two packages of the crescent rolls. And here's a really good tip. When you lay out your crescent rolls, they come in packages of eight. So you start out at 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and then you fill in from there. So it, kinda, it doesn't matter if it's real even or not, but just so you don't, don't make yourself crazy on how to do this. And you can see we're kind of overlapping them in here. And you just go along the edge like so. This is so pretty. This would be a great potluck dish to bring. I mean, you look like you spent hours doing this, but these pre-made doughs and rolls just make life so much easier. And you can see I'm just following all the way around. And you're always going to end up with the equal amounts. And I'm putting the points out on the outside, so it basically looks like a sunburst like so. And you notice it's a little rise in the middle where they've overlapped. I just take a dough roller. You could do this with your hands if you'd like. But you want to even out the dough just so it bakes a little more evenly because there's a lot of dough in here. And we want to leave a kind of a hole in the middle because it's a ring. If you make this during the holidays, you can call it a wreath. But that's all there is for that. So we're going to set that aside. And in the bowl, I have about a cup and a half of grated cheese of your choice. I personally like cheddar. You could do a, uh, I think Swiss cheese is very good too. You want something that'll hold the flavor. Uh, or half and half. Sometimes I'll do half of each. Uh, American cheese is good too, but you want something a little stronger that's going to stand up to the flavor of the broccoli, which is very strong on its own. So I've chopped up the ham and we're going to add about a cup of ham to this and that's about good and we'll set that aside over here and then I thought it'd be fun to show you how to chop the broccoli because I started doing it and I thought you know here are the stems and so many times we take the stems and we just toss them aside well you know these are perfectly good to use and this is my food chopper. Remember, you can email me if you want to know how to get these. And I just chop them up like that. And they're in even pieces. And if you're in a bad mood, this is great to do. Good for frustrations, which is nice to do. 
and just into small consistent consistent pieces because they cook better that way. And we want about a cup, same amount uh, as the ham. Let's do one more. You know, this makes a great soup with the leftovers that you have. Do a nice chicken and broccoli chowder with potatoes and really good to have. So we have, this goes into the bowl along with the ham and the cheese. And then we're going to add some onions. Red, I like the red onions. I think those are good. This over here. And... If you use the chopper for nothing else other than onions, do you like to chop onions? I don't. So, um, in a good way to keep, you know, people say all the time, how come onions make me cry? Well, I've got a great tip for that. The way to keep onions from making you cry is to have somebody else chop them for you. And that works really well for me. So, we're going to do that. And then chop these. Now see, if you just want to do a stir fry, you just do a few chops. Well, let's get them diced really in small pieces. And I like the red onions. I like the flavor of the red onions. And we want about a third of a cup to a half a cup. More or less. Do that. And that goes into the pot. Now see they're making me cry, so I should have had somebody else do this. Right, Harry? Audience. <laughs> Harry's in my audience tonight. He's my sweetie. <coughs> Harry's fun it's to cook good. for. <laughs> it looks great so far. So <laughs> far. And then you need a polka dot spatula to blend all of this together. And we're going to add about, oh, let's see, we have the onions and about a teaspoon of fresh lemon juice. Always use fresh lemon juice. And remember my um, tip about you can freeze lemons. Did you know you can freeze lemons? Keep them in your freezer. And if you ever want to zest a lemon, you can zest it while it's frozen. It's actually easier to do. And pop it back in the freezer. And if you ever want to juice a lemon and you thaw it out, after it's frozen, you get, it gets kind of soft and uh, it makes a great juice lemon and you always have them in the freezer. You can do the same with limes and oranges as well. Don't waste the outer zest. It's so, so good for you. And then we're going to take Dijon mustard and we're going to do about two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. We're going to measure that very carefully exactly approximately that much and that's it i mean you don't need any salt in this because the ham is salty enough so this is all the um cheese in here is going to melt in and kind of bind everything together for you along with the mustard and the lemon juice really enhances the tanginess of the mustard so you can see how that would be a good use of your leftover ham. And then inside in the ring, you could get fancy and use a cookie scoop if you'd like. But basically, you want to get most of the filling onto the dough. Isn't that pretty? It looks like spring, doesn't it? And a little goes a long way. I mean, if you um, don't have a ham... You can go to the deli and just get six ounces of sliced deli ham and you're good to go. But what a great use of leftover ham. This is almost worth cooking a ham for, but you don't need that much of it. A little goes a long way. And broccoli's good for you. And it's just a marriage made in heaven because the blend so well and you can see it doesn't have to be exact because we're going to fold over the tops now watch this you take the top of the dough 
and fold it in and over the top. So you get these little spaces in between and it doesn't have to be perfect. You just kind of tuck it under here inside as we go along. And it kind of looks like a ring when you're done. It doesn't have to be perfect, like I said. And we'll probably cook this for about 20, 25 minutes or until the crescent rolls are done. And that's why I love these baking stones because not, the crust isn't going to be soggy underneath. It's going to be nice and crispy. And it'll, if it's done on the top, it's going to be done on the bottom. And it, they don't stick either in here. So this is a very well-loved and used baking stone. I love it. So that is... <gasps> look at that, Harry. Wow. I did it. <laughs> Doesn't that look nice? I'm going to pop this in the oven and put the timer on. And when we come back, we're going to do a great carrot salad. We'll be right back. We have our broccoli hammering in the oven. It looks fabulous. If it wasn't me, I'd be impressed because it's easy, it's fast, it makes a spectacular presentation. You're going to be so proud to put this on the table. And to go along with that, I was thinking of a salad to do. And we used to do in salads with greens, and I thought a fun all um, carrot type of salad with just a few enhancements would be a good way to go. So I did a combination of grated or shredded carrots that you can buy in a bag. And then I grated some fresh carrots of my own so that, that it would have different consistencies. You know, the, I thought the grated carrot would, was a little too coarse, so I enhanced it with some um, grated ones. So you, it's up to you and your taste and how you like to do things. And in here, I have some dry cranberries. Believe it or not, they come in a bag, but when you plump them up, and I put the, I took a little fresh orange juice and microwaved it until it got hot, and then I soaked the dried cranberries in this overnight. And look at, they look just like fresh cranberries, but they're a little bit sweeter. So they've kind of um, reconstituted with the orange juice and just add another dimension of flavor. And you can see there's not much juice left. They've all kind of absorbed that. So this is going to do a lot of color and add a sweetness to this as well. So that's probably a half a cup. And I like the juice too, so we're going to add that in. And then a little bit of, um, this is a little bit of orange juice. And I think lemon juice really adds a lot to it as well. So we're going to add some fresh lemon juice to it and toss that around. And when I grated the carrots, I did them kind of ahead of time. And while I was grating them in my food processor, I added some candied ginger, which is one of my new favorite things to have in the pantry. And they're just little gems, little nuggets of preserved ginger. And you can add this to your soups. They, it's wonderful to have in tea, very soothing if you have a cold. Of course, ginger is very good for your stomach um, anyway. But I took about five of these and grated them up in the processor along with my carrots. So there's an underlying flavor, if you will, of ginger on this. And it just adds a whole nother dimension to your salad. Now, at different times of the year, you know, I always love to give you different ideas and tips on how to change up your recipes. I've added some fresh, fairly firm pears and grated those along with the carrots. Or you could add a nice tart apple to this if you wanted for a nice, it, it's just a really refreshing summer salad to take on picnics or to have at the beach or just have in your refrigerator. It's light, healthy, and refreshing. And it uh, makes a beautiful presentation. Now I'm going to show you here my one of my new favorites. I love honey. And if you're adventuresome and you want to try something different, this is a, a coffee blossom honey. And I thought, why not? Why not give that a try? It is to die for. It is so good. And we're going to add just a scant teaspoon of honey into here just to bring out all that sweetness. You don't want it too sweet because the carrots are pretty sweet on their own. 
So then we're going to blend that. And I have to say, you can make this and serve it right away, but it is so good to let set in your refrigerator and just have all those flavors meld together. Even if you just did the ginger with the carrots and let that set overnight and assemble the rest of it, you're, you're going to be amazed at how different it is the second day. So, of course, leftovers are never a problem. So you want to make a lot of this to have on hand. And then I'm going to take it and put it out into a pretty bowl because it's all about the presentation. And I just set it right up in the center of this bowl. Get every bit in there. Oh, that looks, it smells so good. I'm going to put that in like so. And as it sets, you're going to notice that it's going to exude some of the juices that come out. And that's perfectly fine. I have some green onions for color. Sometimes if you want to do a little um, Hawaiian or tropical uh, take on this too, you can add a can of chunk pineapples and toss in a little bit of coconut um, as well. And it gives it a whole different dimension. But again, you're starting with the basics. Add things into it and make it your own. And then you can truly say, this is my famous carrot salad. This is going to be so good any time of year, but especially with our broccoli ham ring. So moving along, we're going to come back. You're going to be amazed at our dessert. See you in a bit. Hey, welcome back. We're doing our dessert. Um, the broccoli ham ring is in the oven. We've done a wonderful carrot salad. I hope you try these at home. Let me know how, how they come out for you and, and if you enjoy using them and your variations too. It's so amazing what, what you people will take things and make your own um, versions of what we do here. It's, it's very interesting. So thank you. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to start with the topping to give this a chance to cool. And we're doing a deconstructed pineapple upside down cake. When I was young, hundreds of years ago, my mother, this was a f considered a very fancy dessert because it was with pineapples, very tropical. So we're going to do a, an updated version. I have about a tablespoon and a half of melted butter. And I'm going to add some brown sugar to this, probably about the same amount, a tablespoon and a half. And then a can of very well-drained crushed pineapples and drain these overnight. I love to do things ahead of time. It just makes everything so much easier. And I'm going to keep this tray so that when these, it just takes a few minutes to cook, I'm going to take this mixture out and cool it down a little bit in that same dish. So I'm going to put this on the stove and just mix it up a little bit and let it simmer for a few minutes. You don't need a lot of time. But this is going to give you that pineapple flavor. I think I'm going to do a little bit more brown sugar in here. And get a nice glaze, if you will, on top of the cake to finish it off. Use a nonstick pan when you can because it just makes it easier. And don't put it on too high a heat because if you do, the sugar is going to burn or harden and that's not what we want here. So we'll just do that for a while. Gonna have Harry, if anything smokes over there, let me know. Because <laughs> it shouldn't. <laughs> and then these are our little dessert cups. Now these are great to do for individuals if you want. Um, it makes a nice presentation. And I'm going to get out our cream. We did a cream filling, which is probably a different, a pineapple upside down cake when you have cream in the middle. But I thought if I could add something else to it, why not? So um, I was going to say, too, in, in addition, if you wanted, you didn't have fancy cups like this, take a shot glass or a small, um, like an old fashioned type of glass that's clear and you can layer it. It makes a pretty presentation or you could take a trifle bowl like this and do one larger presentation too so again adapt to whatever kind of drama you want to present in your kitchen this is nice if you know how many guests you're having uh, for dinner if it's a sit-down dinner if you're not sure by all means 
do a trifle. It takes the guesswork out of how many and whoever. So I like to rely on those sometimes too. Now I bought a regular store-bought pound cake. You can make your own. You can use angel food cake. But I sliced fairly thick slices like so. And find a cutter that will fit inside the bowl so you know that it's going to fit. And I just cut out these little round shapes like so and pop them out and put them at the bottom of your individual dishes. I love these little dishes. It says home baked on the inside in case you're wondering what that says. And then for the filling right here, <coughs> excuse me, I have a mixture. I love puddings. They're so nice. And I'm going to top this with pudding. And this is a vanilla cream instant pudding and you'll notice the consistency is a little thinner than a regular pudding because I want it to kind of melt into the cake mixture so instead of milk in here I used a can or two cups of coconut milk and you make sure sometimes they separate make sure it's true coconut milk and you shake it to begin with and you get a much lighter consistency on your cream and it has a wonderful coconut flavor that works really well with your tropical pineapples. So I'm going to put this on top, press it down a little bit. And I've done these ahead of time. You can see how it sets up in there as well. Let me check on our pineapples over here. And you just want to make sure the mixture is cooked a little bit. And it's going to be a little juicier, but that's good because that's all going to blend in. And I'm going to pour this into the bowl that we had before just to chill it a little bit. And you can certainly do these ahead of time, especially if you take the pudding... I mean the pineapple mixture and cook that ahead of time and give it a few minutes to chill out if you will. So we'll take that. I have over here some whole cherries, just dried cherries that are good, which gives you that look of the pineapple upside down cake. And this is pretty cool. And you can see the consistency. Let me put this here so you can see. You can cook it a little longer if you like, but honestly, the cake is very dry, and I love when it's the pineapples are a little bit juicier, so the juice soaks in and permeates the cake layer, and it just gives it a really decadent flavor. It's kind of like what the pudding's doing to the cake. Then on your topping, you have this luscious pineapple topping, and you want a good tablespoon on top, enough to cover the whole top. Oh, that smells really good. Let's do the others. In one can is plenty. One whole large can of crushed pineapples is just enough to do the top of all of these. You could certainly do a whipped cream on top of this and flavor it with coconut extract if you wanted to enhance the flavor. But I really like the look in presenting this with the cherry on top, as is traditional in your pineapple upside down cake. And then we're going to take the cherries and make that presentation on the top. Oh, I think that looks pretty good. And there's no reason why, again, as I mentioned, you can do this ahead of time. Put these over on here. And who wouldn't love having something like this on your dinner table? A pineapple. Re, kind of repurposed and re, you know, just uh, deconstructed pineapple upside down cake. I'm going to bring everything out to the table for you and make our 
beautiful springtime buffet presentation. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. Look at our springtime feast. Our beautiful broccoli ham ring. How pretty is this? How easy. Remember to just follow the instructions on baking the crescent rolls and you're good to go because everything inside is already cooked. The broccoli, the ham, the cheese, that hint of lemon juice and Dijon mustard, amazing. A beautiful carrot salad, shredded and grated carrots and the uh, infused dried cranberries that we reconstituted in a little bit of pineapple juice and orange juice. And uh, that's refreshing any time of year. The deconstructed or updated version of your pineapple upside down cake. Quick and easy, you can assemble this. There's no bake necessary if you purchase your um, pound cake. And you could even use angel food cake in that as well, or a white cake mix. Now I took the rest, you know, when you cut up, you use a um, cookie cutter to cut up the little pieces of your pound cake. You end up with a lot of scraps and extras, as long along with the um, coconut milk pudding that we had. So we just built a little trifle with all the extras. So look at all that you can do with one recipe, and it's a nice variation as well. Beautiful presentation on all of these that will really extend your Easter ham. And I'm so glad and thankful for all, everyone who writes in with your comments and your inquiries. Keep those um, emails and notes coming. I appreciate it. I hope you try these recipes for your friends and families. And thank you so much for watch, watching. And may the fork be with you. Hi. We've got some exciting news to share with you about our new upcoming program segment. It's called The Fork in the Road. And what we are excited to share with you are dining experiences locally. We have some wonderful restaurants that we're going to review, and you're not going to want to miss it. It is so fun. So remember, when you come to The Fork in the Road, take it. We'll see you soon. <music>